We are running late this morning, so I'm apologize for that. It will probably be another 15 minutes. Or if you'd like.
Thank you everyone for your patience this morning and welcome Evelyn. If you are able, please rise at the sounding of taps.
Our hymn is from the Black New Century Hymnal, number 472, the first two verses, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. May be seated. <clears throat> we gather in the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends in Christ, I am Reverend Suzanne Wagner, and I welcome you to the service of remembrance this morning. And at this time, I invite you to please turn your cell phones off or on silence. We gather in the protective shelter of God's healing, love, and grace. We come to comfort and to support each other as we bear this loss. We gather to hear God's words of hope, which can drive away our despair and move us to thanksgiving for the life that God granted to Tom Isaac and that he shared with all of you. We gather to remember, celebrate, and commend to God the life of Tom as we celebrate the good news of Christ's resurrection and what it means for all of us. For whether we live or die, we belong to Christ, who is the Lord both of the dead and the living. We come to worship our God who through Christ reminds us I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. If you are able, please rise. And join me in the responsive call to worship as printed in your bulletin. We are as pilgrims on a journey of faith. We come seeking the light for our darkness, strength in our weakness. And our hymn is Amazing Grace from the Black New Century Hymnal, number 547, verses 1, 2, and 5.
Hear now the promises of God. God is near to all who call, who call from their hearts. The desires of those who respect God are heard and they are saved. Come to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose will is sovereign and whose mercy is boundless and made known in your merciful love for Tom, look upon each one in their sorrow and enable us to hear your word. Help us to hear so that through patience and the encouragement of scripture, we may hold fast to the assurance of your favor and the hope of life eternal. Through Christ, our risen Savior, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated now. It is the gentle shepherd who has called Tom home, and yet it is that same gentle shepherd who will guide us through the rest of our earthly lives. Please join me in reading and praying the 23rd Psalm as printed in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He leads me in paths. He leads me in paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. And our reading from the New Testament this morning is from John, the 21st chapter. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two disciples, Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus and Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. 
And when they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. And Jesus said to them, come, have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Well, Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Then Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Well, in this passage that Tom and Evelyn both chose um, for us to reflect on today, the disciples, you know, they're back to their usual boating business or fishing business, and they're not having any luck at all, none whatsoever. So they come ashore, and Jesus, whom they don't recognize, tells them to cast their nets on the other side of the boat. And voila, right? There were fish, hundreds of fish. Well, 153 of them. The Bible was very exact about that. And through this miracle, Jesus rec they recognize Jesus, and he serves them a delicious and hearty breakfast. Well earned, I'm sure. Then Jesus gives some instructions to Peter. Peter, that very same Peter who denied Jesus three times, now proclaims his love for Jesus three times. And Jesus says, follow me. You know, back on that beach in the Galilee, Jesus loves he provided for them. They were fed by the culinary skills, love, and selfless giving of Christ. And they were also given their mission to feed others, to help others, to see a need and then fill it. So something tells me that it was no accident that you chose the scripture today. Tom loved too, and his life was led by this biblical story, this biblical story of love. From early on, taking responsibility for the sake of others, he reflected upon the meaning of life. From there, he wanted to be involved. The United Way, Emma Davis Ministry, driving for cancer patients. His love knew no bounds of space or time. He lived a life of service, and he possessed the passionate and compassionate ability to love others. His love fed others as he was being fed by the one who feeds all of us. He was a lifelong disciple of Christ. However, we know that life is never easy. 
nor smooth sailing. Sometimes it sails, it sails through turbulent waters. We cannot direct the wind, but, but we can adjust the sails, as the saying goes. And yet through all of this, Tom remained faithful to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And his sails were set on the horizon. And that, I think, has made all the difference. He was fed, and in turn, he fed. And we are fed, of course, too, fed by his life, but also fed by Christ. When our nets are empty, there'll always be a fish or two for us, a piece of bread, maybe, or at least a crumb. When we don't have the energy to feed ourselves, Christ will fry fish in ways that are unimaginable. So when Christ asks us to feed his sheep and to follow him, we will be able to feed others with love and with kindness, with respect and moral decency, because that is the way of Christ. And that is what Tom did. So we come together to share in our sadness and the loss of this faithful life. Let us pray for this world. Let us pray for one another and ourselves. Be God's instrument of peace. Let it by the hope and love of God and let us feed those who still hunger. Let us live out loud like Tom did. All in his name. Amen. Joe and Cindy Serapiglia could not be here this morning, but I do know that they are watching. So, um, Joe... Here are Joe's words, a beautiful tribute to his dear friend. Joe says, good morning. I have been asked to say a few words about Tom, who we were all blessed to know and love. I was fortunate to have him as a wonderful friend for over, over 30 years. Words that come to mind when I think of Tom are fun-loving, generous, adventurous kind-hearted, frugal, smooth talker, and humble. Cindy and I became friends with Tom and Evelyn when they joined First Church. He was active from the first day as a member of this faith community, volunteering his time and talent any way he could. He took charge of running the Emma Davis medical ministry for many years, an extremely important outreach in this church. He also volunteered as a driver for the American Red Cross, taking cancer patients for their treatments. I was one of his patients. He received recognition from the city of Milford for his years of service to this very community. Tom loved his family and his friends and was always there to lend a hand if anyone needed assistance. He always enjoyed traveling in their beloved motor home with Evelyn as his co-pilot. Is that true, huh? They drove across the country to Alaska and Canada and more recently shared good times camping with their great-grandchildren within this area. Tom proclaimed himself to be one of the greatest large-mouth bass fishermen in the Northeast. I didn't know that. He would always take time to teach whoever was with him in the techniques that should, should be used in this endeavor. 
And Joe puts in parentheses, it didn't work. He would always remind us to set the hook. And if the fish was not landed, you heard, you didn't set the hook. On the rare occasion when a fish was landed, he immediately brought out his scale to weigh the monster. The only problem was the scale failed constantly. And we were never sure if it was the scale or the discount batteries that Tom would purchase. Who's to say? Tom loved to find a bargain, and it's safe to say he was extremely frugal. He loved to say senior discount, whether the place had one or not. He just had to ask. Tom also liked to cause confusion in a playful way. I could name several, but I'll only hit on one of the most memorable incidents. Bob, Tom, and I were looking for some kind of refreshment after spending the day fishing. Tom decided he wanted a root beer float. I can't recall the name of the fast food place where we stopped, but I'm sure they remember Tom and have a picture of him on the wall saying, do not serve this guy. <laughs> Tom, Bob, and I went in and waited at least 20 minutes. And when Bob came out with the water I requested, I'm sorry, Tom and Bob went in and I waited in the car, Joe. So I asked, where's Tom? Bob looks at me and says, you're not going to believe this. Root beer floats were not on the menu. So Tom asked if they had root beer soda and vanilla ice cream. How, how easy is that, right? Their response was yes. So Tom proceeds to instruct them on how to make a root beer float. Once this was accomplished, the next challenge was how much did this float cost? No one knew what to charge since it was not on the menu. Even the manager was confused. So Tom said, Charge me for two scoops of ice cream and a medium root beer. So after almost an hour, we were on our way home with a very happy Tom drinking his root beer float. Did he make those at home? Root beer floats? We don't know, maybe. Cindy and I are extremely sorry not to be present at this gathering remembering Tom. Our hearts are with all of you today. I will miss you, my friend, and pray that your eternal reward is a weedless pond filled to the brim with hungry bass. One last thing, Tom. Set the hook. God bless you, my friend. Joe. And there is one other person who would like to say a few words also, Lloyd Jacobs, a friend and fellow fisherman. Hi, my name is Lloyd and a uh, great friend of Tom. 2004, Tom and Bob asked me to help them move Emma Davis things to Joe's garage. 18 years of friendship with Tom was my life. Tom was our MacIver. He fixed everything. One February, we, he and I delivered a bed to a poor neighborhood in New Haven. No electric outlet, so Tom rigged up his own extension cord. Two weeks later, we had to go get the bed. The person had died. He and I delivered 40 walkers to AmeriCare in Norwalk. 
and on their way to Haiti. He and Bob designed the lighting in the sheds we have today. As chairman for 16 years, there was never a big problem because he solved it in his cool, calm way. He engineered the telephone system we have today. He made Emma Davis what it is today. Tom loved to go fishing in his boat that he and Bob owned. I would go along with them many times all over Connecticut, drive at 6.30 for an hour or two. We lost hats, fishing poles, lures, and fish, but always had a great time. I will end with this craziest time we had. In Ashford, near Yukon, Tom backed the boat into the water. Bob was in the water to unhitch. I kept it near the dock. Somehow we all went to the van to get our stuff. We turned to board the boat and it was 30 feet from the dock. Headed for the middle of the lake. Tom, the problem solver, went into action. He ran to the house down the shore, jumped in a paddle boat without permission, paddled out and saved our boat. He gave me the bow rope and said, always hold the rope. Someday we will all be with you, Tom. And I promise, I will be the one holding the rope. Thank you. Thank you, Lloyd. Well, it sounds like we just heard two um, phrases to live our life by. Hold the rope and set the hook. There you go. That's all you need in life. So after the service, um, at the reception, there are, there's um, slides and there are photographs, and I'm sure all of you have your own remembrances, which you can share downstairs. Um, because many of us do have remembrances of Tom because he lived such a rich and giving life. Um, however, from what I hear, and I didn't know Tom all that well, that he was a private and a very humble man. And that he loved each one of you. So it will be a beautiful legacy to tell your stories over the next few days and months and years. Share those stories with all of those who love him, especially the grandchildren and great-grandchildren who need to hear this going forward. And it will be a beautiful legacy to take on the mantle of service and compassion that Tom lived. And remember him for the real needs around us, saying, here I am, Lord. Use me. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for your word and for the words of remembrance that keeps Tom's spirit alive in our hearts. We thank you for the tears and sadness, which are only signs of our great love and admiration for Tom. We give thanks for his love and care for Evelyn and for his family. We give thanks for time and experiences shared with his sons and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and the love they offered him. We give thanks for those who cared for him when his health declined, for his doctors and hospice and Allie and Colette. We give thanks for his friends and the times they shared, whether in the Emma Davis shed, in a boat, casting a line, at a campsite in the back of Rob Rob 4, or in his living room. We give thanks for all of the nurturing conversations he had helping others over the years. We have the light of our memories and the light of each other, and the light of your promise to sustain us and comfort us. 
Through our tears, give us wisdom to see in the faith the consolation you attend for us. In your mercy, grant us the unfailing guidance of your saving word, both in life and in death, through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Please stand to sing the hymn, Here I Am, Lord, which is on the insert in your bulletin.
Let us pray. Our servant Thomas Isaac. Redeeming. That he is now free.